turns 50 in style as Cooperstown celebrates with old-fashioned fanfare. Getting in stride with a new invention. If I was to overstride now, I can watch the ball. I don't have to think about my feet. If I overstride, the chain will bring my foot down. And I can feel that. And from the bat of Bo Jackson comes a slew of amazing stories. So settle in, one and all, because coming up next is This Week in Baseball. The picture postcard village of Cooperstown, New York, is a mighty sacred place to baseball fans and players. Here, a legend has it, the game began 150 years ago. A hundred years after that, in 1939, the town honored the game's centennial with the opening of the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. This summer, the Hall of Fame celebrates the 50th anniversary of its dedication. With an assortment of baseball dignitaries on hand, the town kicked off the event with a parade. Of course, some legends can only be there in spirit, which added to the historic atmosphere. It's a dedication, let's say, to the men that helped to make this game uh, your American sport, as I understand it. And I just think it's terrific. We're honoring them. We're honoring the sport. It means people that helped to make baseball the game that it is with their efforts, with their training, with their good showmanship. Who would have found In all these years, it's come to symbolize baseball across America and around the world. It's come to symbolize all the best in baseball and in America, across the country and around the world. Besides the opening of a new wing to the museum, there was the unveiling of a Lou Gehrig stamp, a dedication that brought back memories of the original one in 1939. On that day, baseball immortalized Ty Cobb, Honus Wagner, Christy Matthewson, Walter Johnson, and Babe Ruth. You know, to me, this is just like an anniversary myself. Because 25 years ago yesterday, I pitched my first baseball game in Boston, for the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> so it seems like an anniversary for me, too, and I'm surely glad. And it's a pleasure for me to come up there and be picked also on the Hall of Fame. Thank you. The very first induction concluded, Hans Wagner and Eddie Collins chose up sides for an exhibition game played by stars of the day next door at Doubleday Field, events that were recreated as part of this year's ceremonies in the same ballpark. First, an exhibition of town ball, a forerunner of baseball, and a game that 20th century players haven't quite figured out. The ball looks somewhat the same, but the bats? I like the idea if you don't can't find one that you like, then just go out and get you a lemon and work on it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Lonberg tried his hand at town ball, and though the rules still escaped him, he got the knack of it. From the old game to the old timers game, starring past heroes who couldn't have picked a more perfect setting to play ball. Baseball is all about Cooperstown, believe it or not, you know, because uh, uh, when you look at the history of the game, you know, this is where it supposedly started at. This is where the Hall of Fame is. This is uh, uh, the last stop for everybody. This is everybody's oh, dream. Sure. And so from that standpoint of view, uh, Cooperstown is baseball. And we keep on having legends, one of whom might be Bo Jackson. No matter that baseball is not his only game or that this is just his third full season in the majors, Jackson plays with such amazing grace that tales of Bo have already stretched far and wide. Well, there's the curve, and he hammers it. Back goes Kirby Puckett at the fence, and it is gone. Where'd it go? I don't know. To where, I do not know. That's what Kirby's saying. Where is it? Well, where in the heck is the baseball? Maybe it went into orbit. He hit it awfully high. <laughs> I'm assuming it came down. He wanted to call time on that pitch and nails it to deep left. Can you believe that? Incredible. He wanted to call time out, held up his left hand to request time. He didn't get it, swung the bat, hit it out of the park. A three run over. Ball 
Tap to the mound. Bale's going to go to the plate. Dempsey puts the tag on Bo Jackson and hangs on. Third down, six yards to go. <laughs> you know what? That Jackson's football skills show up on the baseball diamond is no surprise. Question is, if the Raiders running back devoted all of his time to baseball, how much more amazing would he be? He's a tremendous athlete, first of all. The things that he's done so far, both in football and baseball, I think have amazed a lot of people. Nobody thought he could play both sports. He could hit, there's no doubt about it. Oh, it's two. Hit the left field, but should be playable. Fairly deep, though. Yeah, it is it's not. It's gone. Now, that was absolutely the highest home run that I've ever seen in my lifetime. That's well hit. Right center field, and it is gone. Bo Jackson showing his awesome strength in the opposite field. Do it, Bo. He hits it well. It could be very deep to left center field. It's going way out of here. Well, we wondered what would happen if Bo got a hold of the fastball, and we just found out. Obviously, he's one of the fastest runners in baseball. Three runs across for the Royals in the sixth. Hit hard. Sheffield can't get to a base hit, but will score another run. All the way to the wall. Jackson has great speed. Around second base. He'll slide into third with no throw. Defensively as well, he's improved tremendously in the outfield. He's made some great catches. Here's a drive into left center field. Jackson on the run. He caught it. Can you believe it? I don't think I've seen a stronger arm in baseball. He's, he's pretty accurate as well. He throws off balance sometimes uh, without even good mechanics and throws the ball harder than most. Toward the corner in left field. It's going to be up to Bo Jackson to try to stop Reynolds from scoring. He can't do it. Yes, he can. I don't believe it. He made an absolutely perfect throw. It looked like there was no way he was going to get it. Sky is the limit with Bo Jackson. He can do whatever he wants to do, probably. Whenever I could do something out on the field to get the crowd on their feet cheering for me or whatever, it makes me feel great because I can affect all these people from out here on the field just by catching a ball, throwing somebody out, striking out. Everybody has their eyes on you at one point in time in the game, and that's great. Go, Bo. And now for this week's quiz, brought to you by today's Chevy truck. Tony Gwynn has a good shot at a fourth batting title. Can you name the National Leaguer with the most batting titles ever? Hey, how about the Astros? What else but Hocus Pocus can explain all of their late-inning wins? Davis hits one toward right center. Doran is into third. Biff Roberts bobbles the ball. Billy Doran's being waved home. Here's the relay from Alomar to the plate. The Astros win it. The Astros win the ball game. And another most improbable finish has gone the Astros' way. When you start winning a few games, especially tough games, you start believing in yourself. and. And especially when we won that 22-inning ball game really meant a lot to us. And now we believe we can win at any time. But the other night, we were down by four with uh, Davis out there from San Diego. And you can't enjoy that situation, but we felt we could pull it off, and we did. So do the Astros. In a recent homestand, they went 10 and 1 to take over first place. Of course, the wins don't come easy. Consider 20 victories decided by one run. New Astro Craig Biggio has sure helped make a difference. He's come back from an early season slump to raise his average 50 points in a month. As for the ever-steady Bill Doran, he's healthy again and exercising some power. Doran rips one deep to right. The roll is out of room. Grand slam for Doran. The Astros are full of surprises, thanks not only to clutch bats, but also a clutch bullpen. Dave Smith has been especially hard on the opposition. With 12 saves, 
He's a leading force behind the team's latest surge in which the Astros have gone 16 and three. Now to the hitting surprise of the Chicago White Sox. Dave Gallagher, who last season hit a team leading 303 and was a contender for Rookie of the Year. But you know, a rookie at age 27 takes a lot of patience and perseverance. A lot of players will pick a certain amount of years that they're going to put in, and they say, that's it. For me, it was five years, and after five years was done, I was still in AAA and uh, spent about four or more before I uh, decided, well, it's either make or break. So, determination probably more than anything. Uh, a lot of hard work. This season, Gallagher is again hitting above 300. He's also third in the league with 79 hits. And he knows now better than ever how to keep his hitting in balance. I got to keep my strikeout total down, put the ball in play, and, uh, uh, and come to the park and constantly work on my swing because I definitely don't have one of these, uh, you know, Daryl Strawberry, you see him swing a bat and it just looks so effortless. Uh, I'm not even close to that. You know, I, I've got to constantly work on a correct swing uh, and try to make it a habit. To keep his swing in check, Gallagher has come up with a device called a stride tutor. Stride tutor, I, uh, I really invented out of necessity. I came up with it because I uh, had a lot of trouble in the minor leagues and still have a lot of trouble and I'm constantly trying to improve on uh, this area of my hitting. And uh, basically the idea of regulating a stride has been around as long as baseball has. It's not a new idea. Uh, what's the only thing new about it is it's uh, it's a more portable way of handling it. What you want to do is just put this strap on the back leg. Just take the other strap, put it on the other foot. Now, basically, what I want to do is use, the, use it in repetition drills, off of a batting tee or in lob toss, something where I can take as many swings as possible. And the key is I'm just doing slow motion. If I was to overstride now, I can watch the ball. I don't have to think about my feet. If I overstride, the chain will bring my foot down. I can feel that. All right, what I want to do is step within the distance of the chain so there'll be a little bit of slack, and then it will only tighten when I pivot my back foot. And now, after I've done this a few times, whether I'm hitting off a pitching machine or any lob toss drills, my feet will just start to do that out of habit. Thanks to his own invention, Gallagher has been in Major League Stride. Now, the answer to this week's quiz, brought to you by today's Chevy truck. Hans Wagner, one of baseball's first Hall of Famers, won eight batting titles, most of any National Leaguer in history. It's a simple truth in baseball that you got to concentrate at all times. Because if you take your eyes off the ball or forget what the count is, embarrassing things can happen. Look. Two and two to Paul O'Neill. Where's he going? That should only be ball three if I'm paying attention. Oh, Paul. Counts three and two, pal. Mookie thinks he walked, but it takes four in this league. It's only three and two to Mookie. You know, they're talking about speeding up the game. That's one way to do it. <laughs> Still more confusion when fielders forget how many outs there are. Five ball to left. Cruck is back. Back. Makes the play. Stillwell goes after the first one and it's a lazy fly ball for Claudel Washington. So Finley gets out of the situation. And confusion on the field is not a lot of the Angels knew there were two outs. Claudel Washington at least felt that there was only one out. <laughs> Things can also seem fishy in the broadcast booth when my peers get a little absent minded. Now's the time for Barry Lyons to be ready. There's two strikes on this hitter. Riles has decent speed. If you're going to ever send him, this is the time. See, folks, there are two outs. One two pitch. Trying to miss strike two. Throw to second. Not in time. It bounces into center field. Here comes Riles. They're going to send him. Thanks to throw. They got him. Nice play by Lenny Dykstra. Maybe, but it's all for naught since the batter swung and missed for the third out. 
Now, we all know that no one is supposed to be better at keeping track of balls and strikes than the home plate umpire. But you know what? Even he sometimes messes up on the job. Bob Engel thinks it's strike three. Robert, you're thinking about that favorite restaurant. The count is three and two. Houston players are leaving the field. The count should be three and two. Bob Engel embarrassed this time. He's trying to keep from laughing and smiling. The most decisive second strike ever called. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Ump. We saw it all. And now fans witness perfect symmetry as we scope out the best plays of the week. First of all, to the A's Tony Phillips. For two, the Rangers Scott Fletcher. New York Met Lenny Dykstra. Go get it, man. A scorcher to Jeff Ballard, Baltimore. Ozzy Smith, Cardinals. Yankees, Don Mattingly. Ray Quinones to Pirate teammate Gary Reed. Dave Gallagher, White Sox. Oakland's Glenn Hubbard. Giant outfielders Kevin Mitchell and Candy Maldonado. Man. The Cardinals, Jose Oquendo. A double play. The Yankees, Don Sloth. The Padres, Roberto Alomar. Baltimore's Brady Anderson. Boston's Danny Heat for out number one. And then on to Jody Reed and Nick Kosowski for out number two and a crash landing. Now to Omaha, Nebraska for the College World Series between the four-time champion Texas Longhorns and the Wichita State Shockers in only their second series. Pat Mears delivered the biggest blow with his second homer in two days, putting the Shockers up by three. Coming off two earlier wins in the series, Greg Brummett held Texas to six hits as he tied a College World Series record with his third tournament victory. And with a 5-3 final, the Wichita State Shockers became College World Champions for the first time. Now we open the notebook for this week in baseball's Twib Notes from around the majors. Second baseman Julio Franco is leading the league with 56 RBIs. More RBIs than he delivered all of last season. Seems the increased output has a lot to do with playing on a winning team, which is what Franco had in mind when he came to Texas this spring. I'm capable of doing things, and in a losing team, I got to get my own enthusiasm, my own attitude, you know. It's not like we're winning as a team, and. See, I want to see myself on the right I can do on the winning team. Like being in the race, you know, you pumped up, you're going to win. It's not like in Cleveland, it's July, you 30 games from the 500s already. And that's how to go to the ballpark. It's like, oh, just another day. I'm going to the ballpark. Just get two hits and forget about it. You know, it must be nice to come to the ballpark and... Hey, guys, let's go get them. We got to win this game. You know, got the attitude, good enthusiasm. By the way, Rogers Hornsby is the only second baseman to lead the league in RBIs. In 1925, he had 143. As usual, the Cardinals' Vince Coleman has been on the run. Going back to last year, he's got 33 consecutive steals. That's five short of the major league record which was set in 1975 by the Dodgers' Davy Lopes, who ran off 38 in a row. When last we checked in with Steve Jeltz, he had just hit his first home run in 1,397 at-bats, the longest drought of any active player. Now, two weeks later, after the Pirates scored 10 runs in the first inning, the switch hitting gels caught long ball fever and led the Phillies on a stirring comeback, hitting a pair of home runs. How about that? One from each side of the plate. Drive to left field. Bonds is back to the warning track for the wall. It's gone. I don't believe it. 
And get this, the Phillies won the ball game 15 to 10. Now our player of the week brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Junior Felix is a hitter of many talents. Against Detroit, the Blue Jay rookie pushed his average above 400 when he hit one way, way out for home run number five. Now it's gear shifting time. Felix beats out a routine bounder to second base. Overall, four hits for the very flexible Mr. Felix. Next week, fans, come along with us for a private tour of the Hall of Fame and examine some of the museum's hidden treasures. That's all for now, folks. See you next week on This Week in Baseball. It's a first. The Indy cars come roaring into the Motor City for this weekend's Grand Prix. Get a close-up look at the men in the fast lane on Sports Final Edition rolling your way tomorrow night at 11.30. And be sure to catch all the plays when the Detroit Tigers swing into action against the California Angels tomorrow afternoon starting at 1. But first, stay tuned for the Tigers on the NBC Game of the Week when our boys try to go for a win in the second game of the series against the A's next, only on Channel 4.